Objective accomplished. Project team updates. Team Beta report. Our exploratory teams have recovered a few artifacts. There is another force operating in this sector. So far, we've kept away from them, and they from us. They appear better equipped, but have made no hostile moves. We are proceeding with caution. I think this guy sounds like a cam, so we'll call Beta Commander Beta Man Cam. Thanks for the update, Beta Man. Team Gamma, report. Nothing to report. It's quiet and peaceful up here in the mountains. We've discovered no artifacts and have encountered no hostiles. And I think this one sounds like an Eric? Appreciate your status report, Gamma Eric. Commander, we're picking up encoded signals at this location. Take a scout force to investigate the signals. Use trucks to build defenses at the LZ. Once you have scouted the area, use reinforcements to clear and secure the zone. Mission timer activated. Group 1, reporting. Christine's mission objective briefing makes it sound like this is just another simple away mission, but I'm here to tell you to not believe it. Prepare the same force you used the last stage of the football and head out. Sadly, we don't have time to rebuild our MGs with the half-track this stage. We're going to want all the time possible in the away portion. Mission timer activated. Incoming transmission. Warning. You are entering a restricted area. Return to where you came from or be destroyed. Repeat. Return to your designated zone or be destroyed. Message ends. And just like that, we have a new opponent. Reinforcements landing. The good news is they will not become hostile until we engage them, so let's do as much as possible before that. This tower here will be quite vital in just a minute, so don't forget to put it up in your own game. Group 1, reporting. Group 1, reporting. And queue up a few more critical defenses for our truck here. Group 1, reporting. Reporting. Construction completed. Our starting objective is down in the bottom left of the map, as seen here, but our plan is to approach it from the east side to prevent any escapes. Group 1, reporting. A cannon on a school bus. At this point, I think the scavenger's arsenal is being developed by MacGyver. Under attack. Group one reporting. Group one reporting. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Set the team to do or die here, as like last stage, our around the back strategy would result in any retreating tank driving right through a kill zone. Also, hold fire due to really not wanting to kill or even scratch a very specific target. Construction completed. Specifically, this target. The new opponent in this stage will become active the moment you do any damage to anything they own and we are not ready to engage them yet. However, feel free to give direct attack commands against any scavenger target, see if we can thin their numbers as they flee. Unit under attack. Unit under attack.
while the repair tank fixes the damage from that push, take a full health tank and have it spot the scavenger base Construction completed. to trigger our ability to call for reinforcements. Also, the new Paradigm Can't Be Touched tank is now safely out of the way, so we can go back to firing at will. Scavenger base detected. Reinforcements are available. Unit under attack. Click on the transports menu in the top left to bring in fresh units. Construction completed. You'll notice there is a timer of two minutes on it. That represents how long, after making the request, it will take the football to arrive here. For willing suspension of disbelief storyline purposes, you can assume that timer represents a round trip from the away site's landing zone. We are going to bring in our brand new 10-pack of mortars with our first reinforcement load. Next, we will design and build three new truck bodies with the half-track propulsion. This isn't because the extra survivability will be critical for the trucks, but more for logistics purposes. We left three trucks back home in specific locations, and if we bring them to this stage, when the next stage starts, they will have moved back to the landing zone. By having a different design, we can know exactly which trucks we are just about to build so that we don't bring in the precisely pre-positioned ones by accident. Begin building three of these immediately. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Time to start thinning the scavenger base. Our main target is the factory here, as it has a tech that is going to be useful in this very stage. Artifact detected. Artifact recovered. Unit under attack. Begin researching the light cannon right away. Also notice the scavenger forces are actually managing to hurt our tanks. Guess they figured out how to research and upgrade themselves. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Throw a tower in this burned out crater tile. Seems post apocalyptically fitting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Reinforcements landing. Grab the mortar team, set them to do or die, and have them come to the south using the same route the heavy MGs took. Also start the request for those three half-tracked trucks we made earlier. Unit under attack. Unit under attack.
I'm reporting. The final structure of the scavenger base is a cannon tower on top of the hill. It's covered by a few units, and hitting any of them will cause them to charge us. Unit under attack. Scavenger base eradicated. Major research completed. Structure under attack. There is one more scavenger group on the map hiding in a northern valley. I'm not sure if they charged me because I killed their last base, or because my latest guard tower fired at them, but either way, their rush to our landing zone isn't going to make it. With the light cannon researched, make a new design using it and the half-track, and set about building nine of them. Reinforcements landing. Construction completed. Enemy base. With the half-track trucks on the map, send them south to join up with everyone else. Here's the spotter tank for the new paradigm again. Remember, do not touch. Yet. My latest sensor tower has revealed what the left portion of the new paradigm base looks like. The sensor tower here is what we will be using to draw the stage out, so be extra careful not to hit it with anything. It's just about the easiest to kill thing they have. Group 2 reporting. Major research completed. With the only thing left in the map's top right corner, let's start a defensive line to engage them. You should have tons of power at this point in the game, so don't feel bad about spending huge chunks building significant defenses. Just be sure to keep them out of firing range of the sensor tank of the new paradigm who I will just be calling the NP from this point forward. Construction completed. Construction completed. Group 1 reporting. To reporting. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. As soon as your nine cannon tanks are finished, immediately set about transporting them in. This will be the last batch of units we bring to this stage. Construction completed. Construction completed. Reporting. 
construction completed. Research completed. Construction completed. Group 2 reporting. I made a big deal when we got the mortars about their huge firing range, but they don't seem to be doing much firing so far, are they? That's because their firing range is actually outside of their sight range. To get any artillery piece to be able to shoot as far as it can, you will need to tie them to a spotter of some sort. That's the reason my creeping defensive wall doesn't have a sensor tower in it just yet. Research completed. Reinforcements landing. With the cannons here, we're going to put them into position behind our towers at the north central part of the map. Also, since they have a clear line back to the landing zone, we will allow them retreat at medium damage orders. After moving the cannons into position, you should have a good 45 minutes left to the stage. If you do not, I actually suggest considering retrying the stage. Not because it will take 45 minutes to crack the base, but because of the sheer number of technologies we will be needing to research after we do. If you do have sufficient time left on the clock, then, well, various unpleasant substances are about to hit proverbial air circulation devices, so I highly recommend making a hard save before proceeding with the next part. Group two reporting. Just as a side note, I try to play this game by never losing a person. That said, that's nearly impossible, so I personally tell myself that any unit that doesn't show experience is actually an unmanned drone. This is almost going to become important in a bit. Group one reporting. Group two reporting. I'll slide the mortars to the left side to give them a good shot at that enemy sensor tank, and then drop down a sensor tower. Group 1 reporting. Once the mortars get the additional sight range the sensor provides, they will be able to begin lobbing shots. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Incoming transmission. Your attacks upon us will not go unpunished. You are in contravention of the new paradigm. Message ends. As much fun as picking on the weakest unit the NP have is, there's a lot to unpack about what we now see charging us, so let's begin. First, these guys are effectively using designs that we ourselves can make. Up until now, we have only been fighting scavengers who have effectively had no armor. Even the lightest bodies of the NP will have some, just like we do. I won't get into all of the numbers, that's what the website is for, but the basic gist of it is this. If you have two major types of weapons, one that does low damage at a high fire rate, and one that does high damage at a low fire rate, the fast firing weapon will be best suited to fight the low armor targets, and vice versa. Second, the NP body designs have less armor than a same tier project design, but more thermal resistance, meaning that flame weapons specifically are usually a bad choice against them. Next, these two units here are of special note. They are both mounting medium bodies, whereas we only have light designs for now. We could, in theory, kill them all with machine guns, but it would take a very long time. Their armor and HP are a couple orders of magnitude higher than anything else we've had to deal with. The medium unit in back is a medium cannon, 
its gun hurts any vehicle we have produced to date. The medium unit in front is a commander, which is a tank I will get into more detail about when we are able to build one ourselves next stage. For now, just know its damage is absolutely pitiful. I think it would take six hits to kill a Rambo, but its hit points are massive. This attack group might decide to charge in different directions. It's possible to bait it with structures or vehicles, but at the end of the day, the strategy we have set up is designed to handle either the case of it heading south or west. The plan is to let it run face first into the towers, better for us if that medium cannon hits the structures, then have the tanks at that location engage the force head on, while the tanks at the other end proceed to sweep in behind them, as they will, just like our own forces, try to retreat at certain damage thresholds. Oh, and the mortar indirect support is invaluable. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Group 1 reporting. Be extra careful with the heavy MG units to the south, as they cannot be given auto retreat orders for this part. Unit under attack. That one tank of ours barely got out with its life, despite only really fighting a single opponent while having four towers and eight other tanks as backup. And that commander went through our line, turned around, and was halfway home before we closed the door with the entire MG squad. And we are certainly not done yet. With the enemy battle group down, we can grab our cannon tanks and swing them around south to where our repair tank is. We no longer need a two-front sandwich strategy, so may as well combine forces. Research completed. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Unit under attack. The NP line was easily winning the trade with our heavy MG tanks, so we're going to need a bit of help breaching the front door if we don't want to lose people. Construction completed. Let's move our defensive line a bit closer to theirs first. Construction completed. Something else to know about the mortars. They can fire at whatever a sensor tower can see, but the range of the mortars is actually farther than that of our sensors by quite a bit. Group 1 reporting. Construction completed. Group 3 reporting. We'll get better sensors later, but for now, if we wish to continue shelling the NP base, we'll want to put up closer sensor towers. Construction completed. Group 2 reporting. If you have multiple sensors on the map, and you want your artillery to prioritize what is seen by a specific one, assigned to sensor, you can give it a direct attachment command with a left click. Group 1 reporting. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group 1 reporting. With no NP weapons overlooking this valley, let's bait out the rest of their force. I'll start putting up a structure here, but I have no intention of finishing it. Construction completed.
construction completed. In fact, I will also bring down the overlooking sensor so that my artillery creep doesn't accidentally target that one NP sensor that we don't want to hit. Structure under and here we go. That's four medium body, medium cannon tanks. Tack. I got a little lucky here that they decided to stop where they did and let my mortars pound them instead of returning the favor. Either way, this is a good time to sweep in with our own cannons to make sure these guys can't get back to their own base. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Construction completed. A combination of that truck actually being on a half track and our over eager repair tank is the only reason it didn't explode. This is why I hate micros so much in RTS games. No matter how much you keep on top of it, there's always that one extra thing you could have done to save someone. I got pretty lucky, again. Not that my trucks have human drivers, of course. If you are wondering why the mortars aren't firing after I attached them to that closer sensor tower, it's because they A. aren't interested in hitting plain walls, and B. the closest target to that sensor, and therefore the one it's instructing the mortars to fire at, is the MG bunker, which is just out of the range of where I placed the mortars. Oops. Also, artillery fire has an absolute pathetic damage modifier against bunker types. We could sit here and let it finish them off with impunity, but we want to preserve a lot of time at the end for research. So, MGs it is. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. NP may have way more tech than us, but flamers by any other name are still short range, so gun them down from long range while they can't shoot back. is a repair bay. This is why we didn't want to let any units retreat back into their base if we could help it. This would have fixed them back up in no time and forced us to have to deal with them again.
Unit under attack. Given the number of times you've seen me have a tank live with a sliver of health, you can, I hope, see why I recommended making a hard save before starting the NP portion of this stage. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Another 4-pack of medium tanks. NP do have a factory in this base. We really should get in there and start messing their base up. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. For the rest of this stage, we can use the retreat at medium order, as there is no danger of us getting cut off, and there's no reason to not use every frontline combatant we have. The light cannon isn't that much more survivable than the heavy MG. The biggest difference is just that the cannons are on half tracks. Also, hold fire to not accidentally shoot that enemy sensor tower. Artifact recovered. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Group three reporting. Construction completed. Major research completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack.
Artifact detected. Artifact recovered. Unit under attack. The base is clear and our forces are safe. I have just over half an hour left. In your own game, you are going to want at least 20 to 25 minutes for the research and redesign portion of this. If you don't have at least 20 minutes, consider reloading that save and trying again. Some of the texts take far longer to research than others, both because they take long and because they have more texts behind them. You are going to want to keep on top of the factory production, repair facility, hardcrete, and their upgrade paths specifically. Major research completed. Otherwise, you will probably find yourself sitting there waiting for that last single research line to finish while four of your labs are sitting idle. Let the damage upgrades and defensive structures just be what you fill in the other labs with after those key techs are going. Anyway, while our trucks demolish the Maginot line here, let's cut away for a bit. Research completed. Alright, let's take a look at our two odd pages of new text. Structure research completed. The command relay post is how one gets to the command turret, but until we actually build this structure back home, we can't do much, so I'll describe it in more detail in the next video. Structure research completed. Structure research completed. Hardcrete and its resiliency upgrade. This will allow us to build actual walls, and was the gateway tech to a lot of the base improvements and new defensive structures that are also in this list. Weapon research completed. Weapon research completed. The light cannon and the basic cannon damage upgrade. We've already been using the light cannon this stage. It is part of a new weapon category known as the all-rounder. Its damage multipliers are pretty mild, even against its worst targets, bunkers and infantry. That may sound like it's a bad choice, using type advantages against specific enemies are how you can gain an advantage after all. So the cannon type weapons do get an additional benefit. They tend to have the highest hit points of any of the weapon choices. Structure research completed. Structure research completed. The factory module and its related upgrade. This will allow us to enlarge our factories to build heavier bodies, as well as speed up the construction rates of vehicles. Structure research completed. Reinforced base structure materials, a simple upgrade to the survivability of our non-defensive buildings. Structure research completed. Systems research completed. the repair facility and its repair rate upgrade. Yay, repair facility! It is far faster at repairing vehicles than the repair tank is. It will act as a location for tanks retreating due to damage to rally at instead of way back at the landing zone, and you can set a deposit point for it, just like factories, for tanks to go to once repairs are finished. This will effectively replace our repair tanks almost immediately. Let me just reopen the intel window so I remember which ones I haven't looked at yet. Vehicle research completed. The Cobra medium body. We can now make vehicles bigger than light. I'll describe this a bit more during the reworking of our unit models. Weapon research completed.
the chain gun upgrade. So as not to leave our heavy MG units behind all these shiny new cannons, the MGs get a rate of fire boost. Structure research completed. The light cannon bunker. Structure research completed. The medium cannon hardpoint. Weapon research completed. The... oh, right, we got the medium cannon, didn't we? Structure research completed. The heavy machine gun hardpoint. Structure research completed. The light cannon hardpoint, which we probably won't ever use. Structure research completed. The heavy machine gun bunker. Structure research completed. The flamer bunker. Structure research completed. And the mortar pit. Most of these new defenses will be getting put to good use in the next stage, as our only previous design, which was effectively a machine gun on top of a water tower, is starting to show its age. So, let's upgrade our designs. You'll notice that, as I switch to the Cobra body, this design shows a significant increase in horsepower and armor as well as hit points for the expected increases in cost and weight. Now is a good time to discuss how a vehicle is calculated. All three parts, weapon, body, and propulsion, go into calculations for a unit's cost, weight, and overall hit points. The weapon then decides a unit's damage output, the body determines the engine power and armor values, and the propulsion determines the absolute maximum speed as well as determining what type of unit it is for the purpose of damage modifiers. There are six propulsion methods in this game. Wheels, half-tracks, full-tracks, infantry, redacted, and redacted. And each weapon type has specific modifiers against each of the six propulsion types. This is how, for example, an anti-tank weapon knows it's doing damage to a tank, it does bonus damage to anything on wheels, half-tracks, or full-tracks. The half-track truck I'll give the new medium body to, and I'll get into why a bit more next stage. I'll also give the Cobra body to our cannon, heavy MG, and mortar design. I didn't upgrade the cannon tank to the medium cannon because, oops, I'll take care of that next stage before I build any. The repair tank and wheel truck I'm not going to change. The repair tank, because it's about to be removed from active service, and the truck will be part of the explanation I give next gauge regarding why I upgraded the half-track version. Group 2, reporting. Before finishing the stage, I'll build a repair bay to give a quick demonstration of it. As it happens, my wheeled truck is pretty beat up, so let's send it over. Construction completed. Group 2 reporting. How about that repair speed? Also, repair bays can be destinations for recycling of units. I would recycle all of my combat units right now and have the factories at home build the heavier versions, but sadly I can't. None of the factories at home have been enlarged to handle the bigger frames yet, so we'll have to worry about getting them fixed in Alpha 6.
construction completed. Group 2 reporting. Assigned to sensor. Enemy objective accomplished. 